Hello out there and welcome back to everything you need to know about Mage Knight board game. This is part 31 and we are finally, finally going to lay out all the scenarios over these last two videos and explain what the game has designed for you to play a game of Mage Knight board game. Reminding you that this is a game system, not just a game. So you can actually play this however you want to using the mechanics that you've learned and the rules that you've been taught through these videos. But these are the scenarios that are listed in the rule book, and you can try them, you can modify them, see how you like to play them. First off, I'm going to go with the most common one being the conquest. We have the full conquest. In this one, you're going to lay out the map. You are going to play over six rounds, three days and three nights. You are going to attempt to conquer and subdue the cities. And then you are going to calculate achievements, award titles, and then you're going to award bonuses for the city conquest. So what you're going to do... It's a two to four player game. It is competitive. It is six rounds. That's three days followed by three nights each. And what you're going to do is in a two or three player game, you'll have a wedge, a wedge shaped map. In a four player game, you'll have a fully open map. You're going to have eight, nine, or 11 countryside tiles, depending on if you have two, three, or four players. You're going to have as many uh, city core tiles as you have players. And you're going to have one less non-city core tile than you have players. Take the number of players, you're going to have that many city tiles and one less non-city tiles. It's the easiest way to explain that. And then the cities are all going to be set to level 4. So the end of the game is after you've conquered the cities and everybody's had one more turn. If the round ends before people have completed their other turn, then the game just immediately ends. You're going to do your standard achievement scoring which we covered in the last video, you're going to award titles. In addition to that, you are going to score some bonuses. Uh, you are going to score seven points for the city leader. You're going to score four points for each uh, city that the player is, a, is on, but not the leader of. And then whoever gets the most fame for all that gets plus five fame for being the greatest city conqueror. Uh, you can also play this as a team game. You can adjust the city levels, do however you want to. You don't have enough time to play a six-round game, no problem. There's a Blitz variant of this. And the Blitz variant is a four-round game. That's two days, each of which is followed by a night round. So a day, a night, a day, and a night. In that one, you are going to have two less countryside tiles, but you're going to have the same number of core tiles. You're going to set the city levels to three. You're going to start with one fame, and you're going to move up two spaces on the reputation track, so you have plus one reputation. You're also going to have one more die in the source and one more unit that you normally would. So instead of having two plus the number of players, you'll have three plus the number of players. And it ends when all the, all the cities have been conquered and everybody gets one more turn. And everything's the same as the full conquest, except it's just a little bit shorter and allows you to get stronger quicker. In addition to that, there is a solo conquest. You can play this by yourself. In that one, you're going to have seven countryside tiles, two core city tiles, two core non-city tiles. You're going to have uh, the first city you encounter is going to be level five. The second one will be level eight. And in that one, you're going to take away these interactive skills and these uh, interactive spells as well. You're also going to have a dummy player. With the dummy player, what you're going to do is you're going to draw tactics. You get your tactic first, and then you randomly draw one for the dummy player. At the end of each round, you're going to remove those tactics from the game, so you'll use them exactly once. So the last day and night, you're only going to have two tactics left. So you choose one, then the dummy player gets the other one. Okay, and then for scoring, you're going to do the standard achievements. You're not going to award any titles. You are going to, if you conquered the cities, you're going to add 10 points for each city you conquered, 15 if you conquered both cities, 30 if you finish the game before, uh, or one round or more before the limit, you get 30 points for each round. You get one point for each card that's still in the dummy player's deed deck that was not flipped. And if end of round has not been declared, you get a bonus, five points. Um, you can also do any adjustment you want to. You can change the city levels. You can set up a megapolis. You can change the map shape. Whatever you want to do. Ordinarily, it's a wedge if you're playing by yourself. If you want to, you can have a fully open map and just be completely lost out there in the universe. Uh, it could be a lot of fun. And by the way, you can play any of these scenarios as a solo game if you want to. Okay, so that's the most common approach with competitiveness. The most common cooperative approach, a full cooperation game is two or three players because the fourth Mage Knight is going to be the dummy deck, so you can only have two or three players. In that one, you're also going to play six rounds, three days and three nights. You're going to have a fully open map. 
you're either going to have eight or ten countryside tiles, depending on if you have two or three players. You're going to have the same number of non-city tiles as you have players. And you're going to have one more city tile than you have players. You are going to remove the interactive skills and spells out, and you are going to use tactics for the dummy player. Now, when you do the tactics, the dummy player gets to choose one, and then all the other players choose theirs. The dummy player gets a random one, then everybody else chooses theirs. At the end of the day or night, all the players choose one of their tactics, and it gets removed from the game. Not the dummy player's tactic. And that doesn't happen on the last day and night. It is a team game. You're working together, so you're going to use team rules, except that you're all on one team. You're not two teams of two. Uh, you're successful if you, if you defeat all the cities, and you're victorious then you will score, you're going to take your base score of fame, you're going to do your achievements only for uh, the person that got the highest, okay? You're not going to award any titles, and then you're going to score 10 points for each city that you conquered, an additional 10 points if every player is a city leader, you're going to score an additional 15 if you conquered all the cities, you get 30 bonus points per round that you finish the game early, you get one point for each card in the dummy player's deck, and if end of round was not announced, you get a bonus of five points. Again, you can vary that with city levels, map shape, anything you want to do. Then there's a Blitz variant of the co-op game. That is also a two or three player game. It is four rounds, two days, two nights. It uses seven or eight countryside tiles, so two less than the other game. I'm sorry, seven or eight countryside tiles. You're going to have two or three core city tiles and one or two non-core city, non city core tiles. The cities are going to be of level 5 and level 8 in a 2 player game. They'll be level 5, level 8, and level 11 in a 3 player game. And again, you're going to start with 1 fame and your reputation will be up 2, so you'll have a plus 1 to your reputation. And you're going to have an additional die in the source and an additional unit and units offer when you're playing the Blitz variant. So those are most of the scenarios. I have 5 more to cover later, but I just want you to hear the basic conquest scenarios for competitive play and the co-op scenario for cooperative play and the solo conquest which again you can modify all these with a solo game just change the rules however you want to so i hope that works for you we have one last video to look at where we'll talk about some unique scenarios which kind of stray away from just good old city conquering and we'll cover those and then we'll be completely done in 32 short episodes of everything you need to know about mage knight board game Thank you so much for patience and staying with us. Until next time, GLHF. Good luck. Have fun.